Hello, team. Season two, episode two. Uh, chop, chop, and away. And welcome. We are going to be talking about connecting words today. Those small little words that go between different ideas. And most of you will have your favorites. Everybody knows how to use and. I like chocolate and vanilla. I like chocolate, but I don't like vanilla. However, it is always useful to have a couple more options in your repertoire, especially in your writing, because when you pause and decide what word to use. But your writing will transition to your speaking. And it's, it's important to show that you don't, you're not limited to just these one, two, three basic words. So our goal here today is for you to add one, two, three um, words to your repertoire so that you can uh, add some, some spice to your, your smart, intelligent English. And I'll already start by introducing two that I don't hear enough. Uh, also and though. So also is like a more flexible and. And though is like a more flexible but. So if I say I like chocolate and I like vanilla, it's really my only option. But you can say I like chocolate, I also like vanilla. I like chocolate, I like vanilla also. So it's especially great when, when you remember another, another example, another idea. Oh, I like vanilla also. And the same thing happens with though. Um, I like chocolate, though I prefer vanilla. I like chocolate. Ah, I prefer vanilla, though. So especially if you remember something you want to add afterwards, these words can come in handy. And I just don't hear them enough. You don't have to use them. And and but are excellent words. But there's some new options. Okay. And this first activity here, I'm going to ask you to go to figure five all the way at the end. So the big one. And it was hard to see uh, when it was crammed in the middle of the page. So I left it at the bottom of the PDF. And we have these different categories. Emphasis. Um, undoubtedly, it is the best ice cream in the city. So all of these words are to emphasize, to, to kind of exaggerate a little bit. We have addition, which is the and family. Um, I always like to, to tell my TOEFL students about furthermore and moreover, that it sounds very, very nice, very fancy. So they're good options. Um, contrast, it's the but family. Um, we have, I like while, I use this um, a lot in my PDFs. Order, just if you need to give examples, you know, first, second, third, they're great. But sometimes you might want to add a last but not least um, result. When you explain something and then you're going to say what happens. Um, this is going to be great for the company. Therefore, we should implement it. Um, illustration to give examples. Comparison, when you're saying something is similar to the other. We have, to summarize, um, we have a couple options here. In conclusion, to conclude. Um, in summary, uh, so to summarize, you have the, these various options. There's no wrong answer. Pick the one that works for you. Reason, um, so because of this, we are going to, to make this decision at uh, the company. We have a lot of options. Conditions, we have if. We will get into more detail next season. And a couple extras, concession. So, you know, admittedly, I, I understand where you're coming from. But, however, nonetheless, we're going to be going in another direction. And last up, generalization, when you're talking about as a rule, this is the correct way to do it, even if it's not 100% of the time. We have a lot of different options here. Um, for those who haven't seen it yet, you can try Youglish. If you want to see these words being used, um, you, just like YouTube, and then Glitch, like English, and you'll see a lot of cool options. But going back to the activity. Objective two, this is a fun little game that I've played with my students before. I gave you an example from one of my classes with Miss Mariana, Mr. Paolo, and Mr. Hanaldi. And this site right here, it'll give you a random first sentence or story. And if you just want some random English practice, go for it. But if you have a friend, it'll be fun for you to use this. And after each sentence, the next person uh, needs to start from one of these transition words. You can do this two ways, where the person finishes the, this, finishes the sentence and adds a transition word. That's the way I like to do it. Or the person can finish the sentence, and the next person will start with the transition word. So once upon a time, there was a butler with a limp because of his commitment to his job. So that's how it started from this site right here. Um, then me particularly, and then the person would go and would continue their sentence. 
it's uh, quite a, a uh, an interesting, a colorful um, story. So thank you guys for that. And our conversation starters. Let me pick one to answer. Let me see. <laughs> Number eight. Have you ever participated in an Easter egg hunt? Uh, this is one holiday that I used to spend with my father's family. And I remember at Aunt Patty's in Long Island, we would always have these Easter egg hunts. And the best ones were the ones with, with some, some cash in them. Some had chocolate, some had some different stuff. But it was always a fun event with the cousins. So Easter egg hunt, it's a tradition we, we, we've tried to include in Lisa's life. So yes, I have participated in it. In an Easter egg hunt. Ooh, it's a tongue twister. But some vocab, sentence fluency. Um, it's the way that, remember, fluency comes from flow. So it's the way that the sentence kind of goes together. They usually say for you to get good sentence fluency. You should have some short sentences, some long sentences. sentences. You should speak some slower, some faster to kind of have um, this differentiation one from the other. All right. Um, when we say that something is choppy, it's, it's, it's um, I went to the supermarket. I bought ice cream. I went home. I ate the ice cream. Instead of saying, for example, I went to the supermarket where I bought some ice cream. Later, I went home to eat it. And that would be a change in the sentence fluids. And your challenge, um, it's this time, you know, uh, same idea with the story. You can do this one sentence at a time with a partner, just like I showed you. Or you can do it by yourself if you don't have a partner for this one. But that is it. Uh, remember, the reason I introduced these, these bigger topics at the beginning is so that you can uh, remember them and put them into practice in our other episodes. So, for example, here in the warm-up, it's a chance for you to use the, the present perfect from the last class. And now, you don't need to master all of these words. But if you pick a few that you want to, um, keep them on post-its near your screen so that you can use them in our other chapters, in our other episodes later on this season. All right, team. Thank you, and I will see you in class.